The Marine Environment Monitoring is a complex cross-cutting area where Earth observation satellites and more specifically Copernicus Sentinels provide major contribution. In Planet Atlas, we led a consortium that replied to the first in Europe pre-commercial procurement tender named Marineo funded by the European Union's H2020 program for research. Marineo is the first in Europe pre-commercial procurement in Earth observation. The project has received funding from the European Union's H2020 research and innovation program and it aims to bridge innovative downstream Earth observation and Copernicus-enabled services for an integrated surveillance and security in maritime environment. The consortium of Marineo includes nine partners. Project coordinator is the National Center for Scientific Research Democritos of Greece and lead procurer is the Directorate General for Maritime Policy of Portugal. Other public procurers and partners of the Marineo Consortium are the Guardia Civil of Spain, the Hellenic Center for Marine Research of Greece, the Regional Fund for Technology and Science of Portugal and the Norwegian Coastal Administration. The consortium is complemented by, by the partners that act as technical advisors, which are the National Observatory of Athens in Greece, the European Union Satellite Center, EU Satsen, and Sintef Ocean of Norway. It is important to mention that our consortium included very strong partners and in specific our sister company Planetec Italia, Kongsberg Satellite Services of Norway, KSAT, Creotech Instruments of Poland and Centro Euromediterraneo sui Cambiamenti Climatici of Italy, CMCC. In specific, we bid and won the Lot 1, Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring and Climate Change, named SatOcean, which had three services. One, marine environmental status in hotspots, two, detection of fish farm threats, and three, detection of vessels and icebergs in the Arctic zone. Semantic search is needed to define the period uh, that we are going to explore. For example, we are looking for a sea surface temperature between August and October 2020. Here the sea surface temperature is displayed, is displayed as a color map for to each color a different value corresponds according to this legend on the right. The color code can be changed, for example, to highlight different details, and clicking on the map, you can obtain the information about the value of the given pixel. With some commands placed at the, at the bottom, it is possible to move along the selected time period, also to play the daily maps day by day, and also to change manually the date displayed on map. A panel informs us if there are some events that occurred in the last week. Now we make a search for global prime productivity over year 2020. When we make the search, we can go to the data analysis panel. The first graph provides the temporal statistics for every week in the considered period. In this case, we are displaying arithmetic means. Each dot provides a measurement for a given week. 
we can change parameters, for example for chlorophyll, and in this case we have both arithmetic mean and geometric mean. The graph can be exported as an image, or can also be exported as CSV format. It is accessed by a dedicated panel. Here we see some previous requests. If we expand a request, we can see that it is composed by a report and by a map. The report contains general information on the area, the data that have been used, in this case chlorophyll per 19 from CMEMS, also the treasures applied, in this case they are water framework directive defined treasures. For each month considered, an assessment is done and also an overall assessment. Also, this report can be exported as TXT. Another output is a map, which provides for each pixel an assessment of the status that can be good, low or moderate. In order to request a new assessment, we can use the specific form, which allows to choose the chlorophyll product to be used, the starting month, the end month, we can choose which kind of treasure to apply, also user-defined treasure can be specified, and it can be asked only the map, the report, on both, and the assessment is launched. Request a new area to monitor, a panel is available where the user can specify a name of the area, a name for the region, and can draw an area of interest on the map. After that, among the list of the requests, the new area requested appears. The area of interest can be displayed with this button and the request can be deleted in this way. With this button, it's possible to select an area to analyze. On the right, there is the debug viewer that allows pan, zoom, and also to change the background map among two possible choices. A button in the top right allows to display the alerts that eventually occurred in the last week. The alert contains a date of detection of the alert, the parameter or parameters that generate the alert, and information on which cages experienced the, the, the alert. Also values that generate the alerts are displayed also against the treasure applied in order to understand and evaluate the alert. It provides from one hand near real-time maps that depict the latest information to characterize the status of the area and moderate maps in order to have a forecast of what is going to happen in the next days. To each area of interest, one or more cages can be associated. In this case, five cages are associated and displayed in a color related to the current status or alert into the area. The Disease Spreading Forecast tool. This tool simulates the spreading of the disease considered as a particle 
using hydrodynamic models. So simply currents, temperature and simulates the movement of particles. To launch a new forecast, a form allows to insert latitude, longitude, depth, intensity and time of the day. It also can use the high resolution modeling data to forecast the spreading. We can see, for example, this already generated forecast. The forecast consists of a, a layer every six hours from the date in which the simulation is started. So it starts with a single point and then with points that moves according to the currents. two types of recasts, vessel and iceberg detection or root advice. In case of vessel and iceberg detection, the user has to fill out a recast form. In particular, the user has to provide starting date and ending date of the detection activity, as well as an area of interest in the KML format. In a similar fashion, the user can submit a root advice request clicking on the dedicated button. In this case, the information to be provided are the IMO number of the ship, departure date and port, and arrival date and port. Optionally, the user can add some intermediate waypoints. This information can also be provided by means of a navigation or plan file. Contact information can be provided in order to sort out feasibility issues. Once a request is approved, its, product, its products will be available for consultation in the map panel. The map panel allows to visualize data and metadata of products generated by the system in a GIS-like interface. The user can add one or more of the approved requests to the map canvas and select one of the available dates. It is also possible to see their metadata. In case of vessels and iceberg detection, the user can recognize these items by their different items shown in the legend. Clicking on a vessel, we can see data gathered both by AIS tracking and Sentinel-1 monitoring.
the system provides general information regarding the route, clicking on the yellow line. The user can also click on a single position to see data related to a specific point in time.